Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're gonna talk about one-on-one -on -one role play plots and settings. This is part two of my one-on-one -on -one role play Bible series. Last time we talked about how to think about and set up your rules, and this time we're gonna talk about different methods you can use to record what sorts of plots and settings you're into doing. So your particular one-on-one -on -one role play Bible can be either character first, plot second, or it can be plot first, character second. And whatever method you choose is fine. So next time we're going to talk about some of those particular things about characters, but this time we're going to focus on the plots and settings. Just like when you're writing character bios, RPG plots, or anything else where the main goal is to inspire another person, keep it short. All of these should take 60 seconds or less to read and leave plenty of room for potential role play partners to come in and put their own stamp on the plot or on the setting. If it takes longer than that to read, then what's happening is you're potentially missing out on really good role play partners that just aren't taking the time to fully read and absorb what you've written. Okay, so we've talked about all of that before and why that's important and all of those things in previous videos, so I'm not gonna delve into it too much. If you want more on that, I've got um, an RPG plots video and a character bios video that talks into more of the, the methodology of why that's so important. Okay, so let's dive into it. When it comes to talking about what sorts of plots you're interested in, there's a few different methods to do it. So one of those methods is describing the plot as an interaction between character A and character B. For example, character A is this, and character B is that, and then this event happens that brings them together. If you've been roleplaying for a while, then I'm sure that you've seen these sorts of structured plot posts in various places. This is kind of the most basic way to write out plots that you might be interested in. And it's really common because for a lot of one-on-one -on -one role players, what you're really doing is focusing on the main character that you're playing and the main character that your partner is playing, and all of the other characters that might appear are sort of relegated to NPC status. These are also super easy to combine with other prompts to kind of put a whole story together that's not just one individual prompt. And this can be really helpful for people who are interested in doubling. So what doubling is, is saying that you're going to play a few different characters as sort of your main character and your partner is going to do the same thing. And this can be really helpful for people who feel like they always end up playing the same character over and over. So for example, majority of role players are female, so there are role players that are not willing to play those male characters. So if you are willing, you can sort of get stuck in a rut sometimes where you're just playing the male over and over and over and none of your female muses get attention. Doubling can help with this. Doubling can, of course, apply to things that don't have to do with gender. That's just an example. So doubling can be good for anyone that feels like they end up playing the same role over and over and they want to play some of their lesser used muses. These character A, character B style write-ups are great because it's really easy for a person to look at your plots with these write-ups and they can see exactly where they might fit in and what they might be interested in. So I would also recommend when it comes to writing up these sorts of plots that you specify if you're interested in playing character A, character B, or either. Because what's gonna happen is people are gonna read that, they're going to pick, pick out which one they wanna play, A or B, and they're gonna look at to see if you are willing to play the other one in your write-up. Another way to write out plots is to describe the setting or the verse. This is really useful if you've got a lot of canon characters that you're playing, or you've got a lot of pre-made original characters that you're playing. So I'll give you an example. So I like to play Emori from the 100. That's one of the muses on my list. In my one-on-one -on -one role play Bible, I have a short description of each season of the show that I've seen so people can get an idea of how I might play Emori if we're doing a role play set in the show. In addition to that, I have a comic book verse where her arm was forcibly replaced with a metallic arm that has particular powers. So that fits comic book Amori and it still has elements of Amori's character from the show. And then I have another verse that's a supernatural verse where she's a werefox. And it also has elements that contribute um, Amori from the show plus my own stuff added in. So when you're writing these types of plots, it's not really so much a plot, but it's more describing how your character is in this setting and how that differs from whatever their typical canon setting is. 
If you don't have pre-made or canon characters in your particular roleplay bible, you can still do something like this. So for example, if you're interested in doing a Game of Thrones roleplay, you might list that or you might do a brief description of something that's Game of Thrones style. Or let's say that you're interested in doing a cyberpunk setting. You might describe what your ideal cyberpunk setting would be like in your bible. Describing settings in this way is also really useful if you're not wanting to play just two or just four characters between you and your partner, but instead you want to create whole casts of characters for your one-on-one -on -one role play. Another way to list the role play plots that you want to do is to list them based on types of ships that you're interested in. Because let's be honest, one-on-one -on -one role play for most people, it's all about the shipping. Think of this as the short version of the character A, character B write-ups. So you might have a list that's something like this, mentor, mentee, good guy, rebel, or office colleagues. Or you might list this as shipping tropes, such as like friends to lovers, on and off again, enemies to lovers, stuff like that. Listing your plots in this way is super easy, and it's also really quick for the person reading your Bible to digest it and understand what you want, but leave a lot of room to discuss the details with the individual partner. So this ensures you're still getting something like what you want while leaving the details really open. Now, when it comes to short versions of the setting, if you're not too picky about the particulars of the setting and you would prefer to design the setting with that particular person instead of you designing a little bit of it on your own, then what I would recommend for that is to list genres. For example, you might list Tolkien-esque fantasy, MCU, or zombie apocalypse. When it comes to these shorter lists for your Bible, one thing that you'll need to be sure of is ensure that you're really trying to be collaborative. Nothing is more disappointing than seeing someone with these short lists and messaging them and then finding out they have paragraphs upon paragraphs of detailed explanation of exactly what they want for these settings. Like, if you have that, it should be clear in your Bible, because if you have these shorter lists, what people will tend to expect is to message you and build the setting with you. So if you do want something more specific, use one of the other methods that we talked about earlier in the video, because that way you're communicating that expectation a little bit more clearly. So when you're building your one-on-one -on -one roleplay Bible, you can use one or many or a combination of all of these different methods to describe the plots and settings that you're interested in. My Bible in particular is character-based. So what that means is I list my characters and then underneath the character, I'll have that particular character's verses. And then under that, I'll have a wish list. And that wish list lists the specific things that I'm really interested in for that character in regard to plots and settings. If you tend to lead with plots or lead with settings, then of course you'll want to use a different structure than what I'm using for my character Bible. But whatever structure you choose, the thing you want to do is make sure that it's easy to skim. So what that means is when someone's scrolling through your one-on-one -on -one role play Bible, they're able to easily lock in on the particular things that they wanna read and then they can read more in that particular passage. So they're not having to read the entire thing to understand what you're looking for. For those of you that have this, that have a document or a blog set up that's, that is your one-on-one -on -one role play Bible, what methods do you guys use to describe your plots and settings? Let me know down below. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.